Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Run Level Zero. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been absent for a while. It's been three, maybe even four weeks since I was able to post a video and I do apologize for that. I've had to dedicate my time to an academic pursuit lately and that went very well. So hopefully now I can get back to producing quality videos for you. I would like to dedicate myself to producing at least one a week and I know I have a few reviews I want to get caught up on. But before I get back into the reviews, I wanted to start out with a bit of a how-to here. Uh, one of my viewers asked me recently about how I set up my partitions. Uh, because I am a desktop nomad, I do tend to wander from one desktop to another, from one distro to another. Uh, my viewer had an instance where he had a Linux installation and then went to install a new distro but the new distro was corrupted, ran into some issues from ghost files that were remnant from his previous installation. And while that is a very rare thing, it does happen from time to time. I've experienced it myself twice. So I'm just going to show you how I set up my partitions. Uh, we're looking at LXLE today. We're running it live. And you can see a few of the distros I plan to review in the next week or so. Here we go. LXLE, it's running live. Uh, it is not installed yet. I have created this hard drive a bit larger than what I would normally give to one of these virtuals, just so we can have a larger canvas to work on. So, let's go ahead and launch our partition editor. Go into System Tools and Gparted. Gparted is a fairly standard uh, Linux graphical partition editor. Let's see, if this is your first time working with the hard drive, what you're going to want to do is go to Device and create a partition table. It will default to MS-DOS, and that's fine for most systems, so we'll just click Apply. All right, now we're ready to work. The first thing I want to do is create my swap partition. Now, your Linux swap partition, if you're newer uh, to Linux, the swap is used as a logical extension of your RAM. So, how much swap is needed is a matter for debate. Uh, just my general rule of thumb is I keep my swap partition equal to the amount of RAM that I have. So this virtual has two gigabytes of RAM so we're going to create a new partition. I'm going to create it at two gigabytes so that's 2048. I don't know if y'all can hear that going on in the background. That is actually a southern thunderstorm going on out there. We get them every day. And we're going to go to our file system and we're going to select Linux Swap. We don't need a label, so we're going to click Add. So there is our swap partition set up at 2 gigabytes. With our 48 gig that's left, the next thing we're going to do is create a new partition to house the operating system. Now the operating system, its requirements are going to vary depending on what OS you're using, depending on what Linux distro you're using. So I'd recommend you go to the developer's website and see what they actually recommend. But uh, for this purpose, I'm going to give it 20 gig. I tend to take whatever the developer recommends and then double it. Now, I have not looked at LXLE. What they recommend is based on Lubuntu, so I'm sure it's, it would do fine on probably 8 gigs of RAM. But I tend to double whatever they, they recommend just to give the OS a little room to grow. So we're going to give it 20 gigs of RAM, or thereabout, and we're going to leave it at fourth extended file system. All right, so there is the partition for our OS. Now we have 28.47 gig left. We're going to create a new partition there, and this new partition is going to be used for storage. Now many people and many uh, Linux distros will actually give you the option of creating a separate home partition. I tend to not do that, it's a personal choice, but I do create a partition for storage. Now, the reason I don't go with a separate home partition is because your home partition is used for more than just storage of your personal documents. It also, your home partition also houses uh, specialized config files. So, say, your setup for Mozilla or Chrome or that sort of thing. And those will be held over from one installation to the next. 
it can cause some trouble and at the very least you won't get the pure experience in a new distribution that the developer intended for you to have so just for my personal choice I just create a partition and use it mount it use it for storage so things like my my documents that I don't want to lose when I when I migrate to a new distro or even my uh, disk images my virtuals I'll put that in my storage partition so I can keep it as far as the file system goes that's entirely up to you but bear in mind if you're dual booting your system if if you have say Mac or Windows running parallel to your Linux distro one of the extended file systems second third or fourth extension file systems they don't play very well with other distros in fact Windows won't see these at all so if you are dual booting or multi booting your your OS's you may want to stick with a FAT32 or NTFS file system okay so I'm just going to create this FAT32 and I am going to label this one storage so there we go so click the green check mark if you're happy with this layout click the green check mark it'll verify let's apply it it will write in all three operations and now you're ready to rock now you're going to want to remember where your OS partition is at you're at dev SDA 2 this is what when you go to install and ask you where do you want to put the OS this is the installation that you're going to select dev SDA 1 is going to be your swap partition now let's say that we have an OS installed and we want to install a new Linux distro so we want to get rid of this one but we want to ensure that we're not going to have any residual files left over to interfere with our new install now again that's very rare you shouldn't have that problem uh, especially if you reformat on installation but I'm going to show you how to be sure you know, if, if you want an extra level of, of confidence in that. So let's go back into our system tools and let's launch a terminal. Rocks term works. For this purpose we're going to be using a utility called DD. Now DD uh, does a bit copy of your source to your destination. So if you have disk 1 copying it to disk 2, it's going to look at each uh, block on disk one. If it sees a one there, it's going to write a one to the to the destination. It sees a zero, it's going to write a zero. So what we're going to do is sudo. This is a sudo operation. DD input file if equals slash dev slash zero. Okay, and this is common for all Linux distros. And our output file of equals slash dev slash SDA2 or whichever partition you're writing your your new OS to. So what this is going to do is it's going to write zeros to every block on SDA2 and this is going to ensure that you have a blank canvas to write upon. Now this you're not going to see any return from this you're just going to have to wait it depending on the size of the of the partition it, it'll take a while to write those zeros but once it's finished you're gonna know that everything on that hard drive is dead it's gone it's been overwritten and you'll be good to go for your new install and that's it it's just that simple well I hope you find this helpful I'm not saying it's this is certainly not the only way and I'm not saying it's the best way but this is a way that I found works well for me and it's fairly consistent uh, let me know if you do something different write it in the uh, comments below uh, share the knowledge. Well, I hope I hope you find this helpful, and I hope to be back with you soon for another video. Thank you.